everyone. Matt Weatherly here from Public Sector Personnel Consultants with a brief overview of the upcoming classification and compensation study that we've been invited to perform for the town. We want to provide just a quick overview and then you'll see an email with some links with some instructions on how to participate in this process. As our name suggests, Public Sector Personnel Consultants, this is all that we do. We do job description reviews and salary surveys for cities, for counties, for school districts, special districts, colleges, universities. I uh, had a chance to work with just over 100 uh, public employers in Arizona. Uh, just wrapped up similar studies in Scottsdale, uh, Nogales, Sedona, Casa Grande. Um, all that experience just qualifies us to ask good questions, right? What factors influence your town's ability to recruit and to retain staff? Uh, who is it that the town competes with to attract and retain staff? Um, and where should we be looking to ensure that we're compensating all of our positions competitively and fairly. The project itself can be broken into two major phases. First will be a review of jobs, and the second will be a review of the value of those jobs. Before I share just a few more details on the classification review, a couple of notes that I think are important. There's a lot of words on this slide, but the punchline is that this is meant to be a very transparent exercise and a positive exercise one that a lot of public employers under, undertake every maybe five or six years. This is something that the town wants to do for you and not to you, very important distinction. Uh, so not you know, trying to make a joke about it or you know, be too terribly nuanced, but it is something that is uh, an effort at getting it right, right? What is your job? What belongs on your job description? And what is my job worth out in the market? We're not looking at your performance. We're not looking at staffing levels. There are about 70 different job titles in the system right now. Our only marching order is to get it right. Help you properly document the number type and level of jobs that exist, and then go do a salary survey. The study itself is generally not the process by which everyone sees a salary adjustment. That's what your annual budget is for. Now, depending on how you receive your salary adjustments, maybe that's general increases, cost of living increases, merit increases, none of that should change. Right. Our role at this time is to properly identify the value of the job, more so than the value of you, the individual, or you, the person. However, when we talk about implementation, we want to ensure that we're paying each position competitively and each person also competitively and appropriately matching up with, for, for example, maybe time and job or performance level, that kind of thing. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit more detail as well as along the way when we look at implementing uh, the study. The classification uh, portion is really you know, the important piece to building a really good compensation study. Uh, I mentioned there's about 70 different jobs in the system. We're reviewing job descriptions. We're creating a job questionnaire for you to review or indicate for us how you spend your time at work. Everyone should take these seriously because it does flow into uh, our comparisons when we do our market analysis. And it also serves as backup information for defending a salary range placement based on the complexity of your job, the assigned duties and responsibilities. We'll be looking at job titles, you know, certainly not you know, too terribly climactic outcomes, but certainly if your job title doesn't make sense, we wanna clean that up. If you're performing the same job as somebody that has a different job title or a different job description, we also want to you know, perhaps recommend that those jobs be consolidated to ensure equal pay for equal work. On the right-hand side of our screen share here, the PAQ, the Position Analysis Questionnaire. Uh, this is not a writing contest, but it is a document that allows you to review your job description and tell us what you do when you're at work. You can work on these as a group. You can work on them as an individual. Um, you can turn them in either individually or as part of a group. You'll see some screen shares as we will be making this available web-based, so pretty paperless. However, if you prefer to write this out longhand, or if you prefer to work on it on a Word document offline and then submit it that way, we will take the information however that we can get it. You'll have maybe an hour or two to work on them. I would say try not to take more than two hours. And then you'll have really about the next two to three weeks, depending on when you're viewing this video, to complete a questionnaire and have that submitted to your supervisor. Where things get a little bit more interesting is the conduct of a salary survey. We'll be collecting job descriptions, pay plans, organization charts, budget documents from 10, 12, maybe 15 other cities, towns, the county, 
There may be some other regional employers that we want to look at, perhaps the private sector for some jobs. The salary survey itself is really intended to allow decision makers to make data-driven um, you know, decisions around where are we when we, when we go to post a job? Uh, are we being fair? Are we being competitive? And where do we need to be or where do we want to be in order to recruit and retain and fill the positions that we need uh, in order to provide town services that we provide? We'll attempt to salary survey 60 jobs or 70 jobs. Typically, we try to survey every single job. And we might not have data for all positions, but we will be recommending updated pay ranges for each position based on career ladders, based on reporting relationships, based on assigned duties and responsibilities. Very common when we do a salary survey, particularly if it has been a couple of years or more, is that out of 70 jobs, maybe we're competitive for some jobs and we've fallen behind for others. The goal when we recommend updated pay ranges is to be consistent. Can we position ourselves to be at market average? Can we position ourselves to be within 5% of market or within 10% of market? And to do that job by job by job, we need a lot of data, uh, but we wanna be as consistent you know, as possible with the application of those study results. And that is why if you remember on kind of just my second or third slide, I said this, the salary survey and a compensation study does not typically mean the same thing for everybody or doesn't result in the same salary adjustment for every person in every position. We may have some positions that are in good shape and some positions that are low compared to market. We need to prioritize those positions that are low compared to market, at least up to our adopted philosophy or strategy of being a little bit more competitive. So again, a couple of high level, just kind of common outcomes. We'll be looking at job titles, making sure everything's kind of reflective of your job duties and responsibilities, maybe a little bit of cleanup here and there, recommending pay range adjustments based on market, and then really looking at you know, employee salaries within those salary ranges. So we can study that based on something consistent like your time and position. I don't wanna accidentally pay a brand new hire in your job, the same as I pay you, maybe if you've been in your job for three years or for five years. We wanna look at all of that as part of implementation, but again, not intended to replace your annual budget process. What you will see as part of this video uh, and really the email probably that led to this video is a second link where you can begin an online position analysis questionnaire. We will be pre-populating page one of that questionnaire, which I'll show you in just a moment. What this does is allow you to start a new questionnaire. This first email link that you receive will be the only time that you'll access that link. Now, if you have time, you can go through the entire PAQ and submit it all at once. But if you get interrupted and hopefully you're able to do it on company time, work time, and you need to save and continue later, you're going to see a new email. You're gonna get a link that picks up right where you left off on your progress. And I'll show you some spots where you can select, you know, either save and continue, save and exit. When you use that browser and do an online job questionnaire, um, it's critical that you either click save or you keep going through the document under the next you know, bar rather than using the browser forward and back uh, button. So I'll try and say that again in a minute. The questionnaires themselves, um, again, are meant for job description review. You can work on them as a group. You can work on them with two or three people. You can tag your friends on that and add three or four coworkers if you have the same job duties. That way we know we're okay to classify you all onto the same job description. After submitting the questionnaire, nobody will change it. You will receive a PDF of your questionnaire. Your supervisor will also receive a PDF. Again, they can't change it, but they will see a link that allows them to comment or sign off, really because it's very common for employees to forget a job duty or two that we want to make sure that your job classification and your job description gets full credit for. We have September 9th set aside, so maybe a couple of weeks from when you're viewing this video for you to complete a questionnaire, hit submit, sign off on it, and send that on to your supervisor. Supervisors will also have a week or two to work on them. Um, so if you need to borrow a little bit of time, work amongst your departments, make sure that everybody has a chance to complete them. But if you're gonna be gone a little bit or on vacation or anything like that. I'm not going to go through the entire questionnaire online because the web-based questionnaire does have uh, tips and suggestions section by section by section. But the first page here is just some housekeeping. You should be able to find yourself in the dropdown 
If any of this information is incorrect, you can edit it and it will give you an opportunity to either update an email address, update a job title, anything like that. But here from the drop down, you can find yourself, you can find your email address, you can find your supervisor's name and email address, your job title, your department. If you're working on it as a group, you'll see the kind of on the bottom of this page, you'll have a chance to click and then tag a friend or add, add people that are also in your job class. You'll notice on my screenshots and when you do the web-based questionnaire, the next and back buttons that start to show up in our online questionnaire, use those rather than the forward and back buttons on the browser. The first page of the questionnaire, both on paper and in the web-based version, really challenges you to think high level for a moment. What is the purpose of your position? What role does it play in providing services that are delivered by your department? High level, you know, elevator speech, long lost relative, when somebody asks you what you do for a living, what do you tell them? Just kind of two or three sentences, three to five sentences that say, hey, you know, I am an accounting clerk and I perform some general ledger duties. I might help out with payroll. You know, primary purpose of my position is, you know, fill in that blank. Given the size of your town, uh, you may wear multiple hats. So you might not only be the accounting clerk, you are maybe also a help desk technician or an IT support help desk technician. Those are two different jobs. We wanna hear about that. So make sure if you need to, you talk about, hey, job number one, here's some job duties. Job number two, here's some job duties. The other piece that's on this web-based questionnaire on my screen share right here is really just a few notes as we go to look for job matches in the marketplace. Do you have peers uh, that maybe call your job or have the same job, but they call it something different? Any insight you wanna offer, it's not a big deal if you put anything in this box or not, but it will certainly help us when we do the salary survey to start looking through job descriptions. If you wanna point us in a specific direction, um, you know, feel free to make any notes there about any other alternative job titles that might be appropriate for your position. Once you've completed this section, click next. It'll be the first opportunity that you could save and continue later. Uh, but this next page has uh, in the paper form, eight boxes, you know, tell us about eight job duties. There's nothing magical about eight job duties. You can tell us about six or 16 or 22 job duties. What we're asking for here is if there are tasks that you perform every day, write them down. If there are tasks that you perform less frequently, but you believe are important and belong in the job description, I would write them down. If there are tasks that are not performed daily, I would just label them to say, hey, periodically, once a week, once a month, maybe quarterly, we have reporting. So if you bounce around between daily tasks and less frequent tasks, just try to label those for us. There is no limit to the number of characters that you can put in here. There is nothing magical about eight. I don't know if it'll give you more than eight, but you can add all kinds of information into these boxes that indicate both the task and the percentage of time. Feel free to look at your current job description to get an idea of what type of information we're looking for here. However, don't feel the need to copy and paste because we also have a copy of your current job description. Again, it's intended to allow you to review and make sure that it is an accurate reflection of your duties. We ask you to write down what you know and what you have to be good at. So if you have customer service skills, problem solving skills, um, skill in safely operating a piece of equipment, uh, knowledge of specialized software, uh, knowledge of how to set up and, and safely create a traffic diversion around a project site, list those there. Education and experience, does your job require a high school diploma, some certifications, maybe a two-year degree or a four-year degree? Give us an idea of what type of additional training or education you should uh, see when somebody applies for this position. Think back to when you started. Did you have a couple of years of experience? Is that still appropriate? Has anything changed? But review for education and for experience. Do you make significant decisions? There are some examples here of questions, but just a sentence or two is totally fine around how specific your work instructions uh, are when you come to work, uh, how you know what to work on when your work is reviewed. Uh, again, what types of decisions you're making? What can you sign off on? What does your supervisor want to sign off on? Who do you come into contact with inside and outside of the town government? Uh, do you interact with maybe the county or the state or you know, other regulatory agencies or utility districts or fire protection districts or anything like that? Let us know both inside and outside of the organization who you come into contact with. 
So we indicate those there. There's one more box if there is anything else that you'd like us to know about, about your job. If you do supervise, and along the way, you'll see kind of these save and continue later banners as you click through your questionnaire. So if you do need to quit, take advantage of those, and then you'll see a new email into your email ad, uh, inbox that will allow you to pick up right where you left off. If you supervise, there's one supplemental page. So who and how many people are, are reporting to you and what are your responsibilities for those folks? And then you can kind of drag your mouse here and type in a signature. Once you submit that, like I said, you will get an email uh, with the PDF of your questionnaire and then supervisors will get an email indicating, hey, the questionnaire is done. Yeah, please sign off on it. And so the supervisor will get an email that kind of says, hey, one of your employees completed their questionnaire. Click here to you know, fill out your section and sign off on that. Again, these are also available as Word documents and as paper documents. Um, ask your supervisor if we need to provide a paper copy. Uh, again, we'll take this information however we can get it. Uh, certainly appreciate in advance the opportunity to review a questionnaire. So thank you for your time in completing the questionnaire, looking at your job description, ensuring that we have accurate information for the sake of performing the job study. Um, and I think with that, I will stop sharing my screen. And then I will thank you all again for viewing the video. We look forward to interacting with everybody as soon as we can. Thanks.